So, Will, welcome to the program. My gosh, the last time we spoke, we were talking about let's hope there's not another big event like you've had in the recent past, all the rain you've had over the summer, and here we go again. G'day, Mark. I know I've been clutching onto forecasts saying the weather's going to settle and we're going to get some a fine February and dry out a bit, and then, yeah, they just um, these events keep coming. And um, this one we've just had, I, yeah, I don't think anyone could believe um, how, how big it was going to be. I, I, I think, you know, there was a lot of warnings around Auckland, Coromandel. We had a warning for heavy rain, but I, I still don't think they anticipated, you know, what's happened here, how much rain and we've had and, and the destruction it's caused. So uh, in your own personal situation, um, were you hit bad? Uh, not where we live. We're at home. We're quite good. Um but we've got a farm at the foothills of the Ruahine Ranges um, that's got a, a, um, a road into it with, which the bridge is being taken out and there's no power, uh, there's no phone or internet up there. Um, so my staff up there and his family are stuck. Um, and sounds like quite a bit of um, slipping and the fence is gone and tracks gone. So yeah, it's gonna be a, you know, probably a good week before we can get around up there um, without, you know, putting anyone at risk. So we'll just have to wait for things to dry out and assess things. But um, generally, it seems to be the the kind of, um, you know, the proximity to the rivers this time. Um, the rivers just haven't been able to cope. Mm-hmm. Stock banks have been breached. And that's where we've, you know, seen the, the trouble and, and, and um, pro- you know, houses and properties impacted and um, bit of devastation caused. I mean, to, out of interest, how the heck do you get a, a new bridge put in quickly? I mean, with that family on your farm isolated uh, with no power, um, how do you resolve that issue? Good question. I've got a photo on my wall of, of that bridge up in, in 1910. Um, so no, no one's ever had to work that out before. Um, and you know we've got um that's the only way in and out for stock trucks and things like that so you know we could we could uh with some machinery make a cutting down through the the creek but that's probably just for four-wheel drive utes um yeah look i i don't know and even then it's not going to be a priority because you've got you know main highway bridges um that have been damaged or um gone um servicing tens of thousands of people a day so they're going to be the priority. Um, yeah, look, where do you start? I, I don't know. We, we, no one's having those conversations yet because everyone's still being rescued. There's choppers flying around um, in and out of the airport here in, in Waipakarau and no doubt Hastings Napier just um, rescuing people that are actually stuck and stranded. Um, so that's still the priority at the moment. And from your point of view as a Hawke's Bay Regional Councillor, um, what have you been able to do or what, what do you sort of plan uh, once you've got your, your own situations sorted out? Yeah, so most of the Regional Council um, kind of convert to civil de- defence response right now. Um, and so that's where all the resources are deployed. Um, so kind of the, the day-to-day stuff um, kind of comes to a halt. Um, yeah, then there's going to be the kind of assessments and, and reviews of the infrastructure, the you know flood protection infrastructure predominantly. Um, uh, but yeah, there's you know there's going to be people asking some serious questions. You know, did it did it kind of um, provide the level of service that's supposed to, and and all those sort of questions, and and how can we you know um, and prove it even more. It's a huge event that it's been. Uh, can you really prepare for that sort of thing? Good question. I mean, I think the same questions were being asked of the Auckland floods a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, how much money um, can you spend or do you spend to be prepared for how big an event and what, what can we afford? So, um, yeah, look, in the, in the short term, or just looking back in recent times you know rates have gone up across all local government really and the affordability of those rates comes into question and now we're going to say well we're going to need a lot more to to be prepared for even bigger events and you know can we like just just in this year alone we're going to have to look at um you know what we can do to um yeah i i I guess ease the pain on on all our ratepayers across the region um because no, no one's immune from this. Quite often we have weather events 
and I'll be talking to you and it might be just, um, you know, the southern coast or in the ranges or northern Hawke's Bay, Wairau, but it, just a, a, as a district, but this is just across the whole region, across the whole east coast um, that I'm aware of and no doubt Coromandel and Auckland hit hard as well. Um, and so this is going to have massive uh, impacts to, um, you know, the, the local economy and the productivity and, and everything. So um, as, as a regional councillor and council, we have to be really aware of, um, you know, what, what we can can do around, you know, the, the rating of, of our ratepayers this year, because um, anything to ease this pain is going to help. There's going to be massive pain out there. Well, I'm, I'm delighted that you came through it OK. Um... Yeah, and good luck with uh, what cleanup you have to do and, and what you can do for the rest of your region. Yeah, massive job. A um, lot of talk still to come and planning for that. So, um, but we'll just get get through, um, running through everyone safe and dry for now. So, thanks a lot, Mark.